When the first Focke Wolf 190s operated over the English Channel, the plane came as a nasty surprise to the RAF. Outclassing the Spitfire Mark V, the Luftwaffe had suddenly shifted the nature of the fight on the Western Front. While the RAF was able to counter the threat in due time, the Focke Wolf 190s career was far from over. Although it was a deadly fighter, the plane soon developed into a natural ground attacker, eventually even substituting the famous Ju-87 Stuka dive bomber. Today, we are going to have a look at how the Germans turned a fighter into a fighter bomber par excellence. The first trials with bombs were already conducted early on in the 190s career, testing the plane's capabilities with 50, 250 and 500 kg bombs. Especially latter, the 500 kg bomb is noteworthy as BF-109s employed as fighter bombers were limited to a single 250 kg bomb at a time. The first trials were promising, although a few modifications had to be made to the plane. As such, the plane's role was expanded from a fighter to that of a fighter bomber. This development came at the right time for Germany. By the end of 1941, Germany was heavily engaged on the Eastern Front, but still needed to make its presence known in the West. From November 1941 to the spring of 1942, BF-109 fighter bombers, a mixture of BF-109 E7s and BF-109 F2s of Jagdgeschwader 2 and later of Jagdgeschwader 26, were conducting anti-shipping missions in the English Channel. They had become quite skilled in hit-and-run tactics, flying low and fast, before striking unsuspecting targets around the coast of England. As these squadrons were transferring from the BF-109 E and F, to the early Focke Wolf 190 Anton anyway, the Germans decided to also substitute the Messerschmitt fighter bombers attached to the squadrons with Focke Wolf 190 A2s and A3s, capable of mounting ordnance up to a single 500 kg bomb. By 1942, the transition was complete and the 10. Gruppe of Jagdgeschwader 2 and the 10. Gruppe of Jagdgeschwader 26 were fully equipped with their new Focke Wolves, ready to rumble. The Focke Wolf 190 quickly made its mark. It was more rugged than the BF-109, had a bigger bomb load, had greater range, was superb in a fight, and the radial engine's lack of a vulnerable water radiator made it better suited to operations far away from the home base. In an operation flown in July 1942, when Jagdgeschwader 2 was still transitioning from the BF-109s, Focke Wolf 190s of the squadron, equipped with 500 kg bombs, sank two steamers off the Isle of Wight. Spurred on by the success and the performance of the 190s, the Germans mounted ever more daring attacks, also against land-based targets such as radar stations and ports. Now the transition from the 109 had just come at the right time. On the 18th and 19th of August, the Allies commenced Operation Jubilee, an amphibious probing attack on the French port of Dieppe. Supporting the operations were RAF fighters, bombers and American Mustangs. A great number of Allied fighters successfully prevented German bombers from launching continuous attacks on the ships in the English Channel and inflicted heavy casualties. Indeed, so well did the RAF defend its fleet that nearly no German bomber actually managed to inflict any damage. However, even though the RAF flew three times the number of sorties and did well against German bombers, Jagdgeschwader 2 and Jagdgeschwader 26 were able to successfully conduct their missions, engaging the RAF, heading transport, landing craft and even sinking a destroyer. After analyzing the battle, the Germans concluded that more Fokker Wolf 190 fighter bombers were needed, confirming that the plane was up to the task, but admitting that not enough were available. In the coming months, more and more squadrons were equipped with Fokker Wolf 190s and ground attack equipment. Based on the Fokker Wolf 190A4, the first true ground attack versions were produced and known as Fokker Wolf 190A4's U3. The modifications included additional armor plating. Some pilots and Geschwaders later on removed or lightened this additional armor so as not to sacrifice speed too much. Going into 1943, the Focke Wolf 190A5-U3 was in production. The later U17 would follow, introducing additional wing-mounted 50kg bombs. The first close air support squadron, Schlachtgeschwader 1, established in early 1942, quickly transitioned to these machines. The experiences with these aircraft prompted the Germans to begin developing a Focke Wolf 190 dedicated to ground attack. The development now split into three branches. The fighter variant development would continue as before, whilst the standard ground attack version as well as a long range variant would be modified out of the existing 190 design. 
The designation for the fighters remained A for Anton, but fighter bombers now used the letter F for Friedrich, and those of greater range used G for Gustav. The previously constructed Antons were redesignated in the following way. The Fokkerwolf 190A4-U8 became the G1, the A4-U3 became the F1, the A5-U3 became the F2, and the Fokkerwolf 190A5-U17 became the F3. All in all, only a few F1 and F2s were ever built, and the majority of the produced Friedrichs mentioned above would be F3s with a production run just over 400 planes from April 1943 to March 1944. With the F3 being the most advanced design, it quickly became the basis for further upgrades. Mirroring earlier tests, a few planes had their wing-mounted bomber racks substituted with optional 30mm gun pods. While this sounded good on paper, tests soon showed that this weaponry decreased performance considerably was unreliable and too inaccurate to produce viable results. As Smith notes, test pilots reported the aircraft was sluggish and its normal ammunition was incapable of penetrating the armor of the Soviet T-34 tank. The F-8, the next jump in design, was essentially the zenith of the ground attack Fokker Wolves used during World War II. The F-8 brought some interesting changes. The bomber release mechanism gave pilots more options on how to conduct their ground attack missions, the plane also had a heavier armament, and there were a couple of minor changes to the airframe and the equipment. The production of the F-8 was soon in full swing. By June 1944, just over 1100 F-8s had been built. Thus, after a 4 month production run, nearly three times as many F-8s had been built than a year's worth of production of the F-3. This production allowed for a radical change in the Luftwaffe's arsenal. For example, nearly all Ju-87Ds in service with the Schlachtgeschwaders on the Eastern Front were withdrawn and the pilots were given Fokker Wolf 190 F-8s instead. By September 1944, Schlachtgeschwader 1 through 5 Schlachtgeschwader 10, Schlachtgeschwader 77 and Schlachtgeschwader 151 were nearly exclusively equipped with the F-8. By now, the production run was also benefiting from the fact that the Fokker Wolf 190G production had been halted, as Germany no longer needed such an aircraft. The assets that had been used to produce that aircraft were transferred to the production of the Friedrich instead. The importance and effectiveness of the Fokker Wolf 190F was obvious. It had a competitive bomb load, was fast, able to defend itself, and durable. While it had taken some effort to finally unleash its potential, it essentially became the most important German ground attack aircraft on the Eastern Front by mid-1944, right up until the end of the war. It also saw service in Operation Bodenplatte. By October 1944, the F-9 with a stronger engine was starting to appear on the production lines. Wing-mounted rocket pods were also starting to be introduced, and the Germans were lining up concepts for future versions. However, with the end of the war in sight, none of these ideas could be realized. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, consider supporting me over Patreon, just a dollar or two can already make a big difference. Before you leave, make sure you to pass by those like buttons on your way out and to share this video with your friends. And if you want to know more about how the Fokker Wolf was used as a night fighter, check out this video. Or if you're interested as to why the Luftwaffe failed at Dunkirk, click right here. As always, I hope you have a great day, good hunting, and see you in the sky.